I'd like to um, call up our first presenter, Michael Clark. He's the lead author of the Eat Lancet Commission Report on Food, Planet, and Health at the University of Oxford. And uh, Michael, you have 10 minutes. Thank you, Greg. And thank you, FAO and IFPRI for hosting this. When Greg said lead author, it's also lead of one of about 30 to 40 people. So don't ignore everybody else. The first thing that I want to talk about is the general insights from the Eat Lancet Commission, specifically what healthy diets from sustainable food systems might look like. So to start off with a few facts, less than half the adult population currently has a healthy body weight. To flip that and frame it in a slightly different perspective, that means that there are more people that are either underweight or overweight than what have a somewhat healthy body weight. At the same time, the global food system is a major source of greenhouse gas emissions, emitting just under one quarter of global greenhouse gas emissions. To put that in perspective, that is approximately equivalent to the amount of emissions from the global energy sector and about 70% larger from the emissions from the global transportation sector. At the same time, the food system is also the largest source of biodiversity declines, threatening with about 70 to 80% of bird and mammal species with extinction. And so, in light of these impacts of the global food system as it currently exists, the scope and goal of the Eat Lancet Commission was to identify what healthy diets from sustainable food systems might look like. And so there are two parts of this question. First one is, was a healthy diet? So the nutritionists and epidemiologists on the project went out, researched the literature, and came up with a reference healthy diet, as we call it. And so the general premise of this is to get the majority of your calories from whole grain cereals, eat some amount of starchy roots and tubers, about 50 to, 70, 50 to 75 grams of pulses, so peanuts, tree nuts, and legumes, a limited amount of added sugars and sweeteners, a limited amount of added oils from oils that are composed primarily of saturated fats such as palm oil, and a medium to moderate amount of animal source foods because of the micronutrients and the amino acids that they contain that are not often very prevalent in plant source foods. So what I'm going to show you is how current global dietary patterns compare to what the recommended healthy diet that we suggest everybody eats. So the bars that I will show right now is that if those bars are above the horizontal dash line at 100, that means we are eating too much of that food on average globally. And if they're below the dash line, it means that we are on average eating not enough of that food. So the first three foods are red meat, starchy vegetables such as potatoes, and eggs. If you look only at red meat and starchy vegetables, on average, globally, we're eating about 200% more than what is recommended. For fish and poultry, we're eating about what is recommended. And for the remaining plant source foods, we're generally not eating enough. Again, this is a global perspective. And if you look at different regions, such as Southeast Asia, as Jess Fonzo will talk about after me, is that you might get very different patterns and trends. The second part of the question is, what is a sustainable food system? And so we define a sustainable food system as a food system does not, that does not surpass environmental limits. And these environmental limits are limits that we do not know what's going to happen to the ecosphere or Earth's ecosystems if we have larger greenhouse gas emissions or use more cropland use than that environmental limit. And so right now, the food system currently surpasses the environmental limits for greenhouse gas emissions cropland use, nitrogen application, and phosphorus application, and almost surpasses the environmental limit for water use. And by 2050, each of these impacts is projected to grow by about 50 to 80% as the global population increases and as the population demands more animal source foods and more calories in general. So in short, by 2050, the global food system is projected to surpass environmental limits for each of the environmental indicators that we looked at. The other aspect of it is how can we achieve a healthy diet from a sustainable food system? And to do this, we looked at various combinations of different assumptions of production technology, assumptions about how food loss and waste is reduced throughout the food supply chain, or different dietary patterns. And so right now, red colors mean under that combination of scenarios is that the food system will have global environmental impacts that surpass that environmental limit. And so to interpret 
these five scenarios real quick, really quickly. The scenario that has the BAU, which is business as usual, so what we think is going to happen in the future if current trends continue. If as the BAU production technology, current levels of food loss and waste and projected 2050 diet is that greenhouse gas emissions from that food system will, will surpass the environmental limit. But if you eat a healthy reference diet, which I referenced earlier, or a vegetarian, pescatarian, or vegan diet, is that global greenhouse gas emissions will not surpass that environmental limit. So filling out the rest for greenhouse gas emissions only, what you can see is that there are a lot of different food systems that have emissions that do not surpass the food limit. But where the issue really arises is for the other indicators. And so if you look at either cropland use, water use, or nutrient applications, or either nitrogen or phosphorus use, is that with the exception of the bottom four systems, at least, or each system has at least one impact that does surpass the global environmental limit. And so what this really means is that in the bottom four systems, which have ambitious changes in technological practices, assume a 50% reduction in food loss and waste throughout the entire food supply chain, and have either a pescatarian, vegetarian, or vegan diet, is that those are the only ones that have environmental or that have global environmental impacts that do not surpass the environmental limit. So, in short, a combination of changes will be needed to create a food system that is both healthy and sustainable. One of these is that there needs to be a dietary transition towards diets that have fewer animal source foods. That does not mean no animal source foods, it just means fewer than what we were eating on average globally. We also need to have changes in how food is being produced to reduce the impacts that result from producing a given amount of food. And the last one is that we need to reduce food loss and waste throughout the entire food supply chain. The added benefit of achieving this is that the food system is inherently linked to many other global sustainability targets, such as the SDGs or the Paris Climate Agreements. Is that if we are able to create a food system that is both, the, both healthy and sustainable in the context of the Eat Lancet Commission, it is likely going to help achieve these other global sustainability targets. So just a thank you for both Eat and Lancet, who were the people that were our organizations driving force behind the Eat Lancet Commission, and also the other organizations that are either hosting this conference or that I am currently a part of or used to be a part of and also the other authors and co-authors on the entire Elite Lancet Commission, many of which are here and have either given presentations or will give a presentation soon. Thank you. <laughs>